All right, Shella Wong. This is Hara Wong, Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha Raka, Kodash, Ma Ma. All right, double honors to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this lesson is going to be a question uh, response. Uh, it was a brother sent me a question about uh, prayer and about faith. All right, and the question was. How do I keep faith and pray? You know, I was being sarcastic, joking with the brother, but also serious. And when I told him, I said, hey, just like Michael Jordan and Nike said, just do it. That's how you keep the faith and pray. But there is a, um, an actual um, custom to how we pray and keep the faith alright because uh, people in the church can't say that they're keeping the faith people in the Catholic churches people in the world their actions there are certain acts that we have to keep to act out in character to show our faith alright and uh, when we pray and how to pray so um, of course we know when we pray we're supposed to have our hands stressed out not like together with, with, if you look at where that comes from it goes back to the same thing uh, where they do the hand symbols for the Jamaicans which goes back to the Yoni uh, um, a woman's uh, vagina then you got the Muslims the Muslims on the cobblestone you have a Yoni and the, sil the little silver dish that's shaped like that all right, but they call that the praying hands. No, this the hand stretched out like this is the praying hands. All right, it even goes into the Hebrew word or the letter ha, yahawa. Ha, the ha letter. Let's get it real quick. Start off with that. All right, so you have the word or the letter. This is the, the the ancient Paleo Hebrew alphabet where you have the ha. The H sound. All right, this is the modern symbol, which is Yiddish. Let me zoom in more. All right, this is the modern symbol, the fake Hebrew. This is what we write it. You, you know the sound. <clears throat> Today we write it out in this way. This is this is the original symbols. All right, from the beginning. So. The letter ha in character, because you know um, the Hebrew the Hebrew language is um, like a comic strip. If you were to write it out, it'd be like writing the comic strip. All right, right here. If you were to write the the true Hebrew characters out, it would look like a comic strip. You know, you have a man, then you have a tent pig, then you have a tent. Then you have a, a ox's head, that, you know, like that. So right here, you have the ha symbol with them is is what. It says ha, which means a man with his arms raised. To look, reveal, or breathe. All right. So the image. There is a man with his arms raised up, in what in prayer, man beholding the Lord all right all right so let's start with um, the prayer or the, the why we pray to the east all right depending on what country that you're in you um, in America Jerusalem is to the east so if somebody was in Russia or a different country, it would probably be in a different direction. But we pray towards the east, all right? So, and that started with King Solomon in 966 BC when the temple, when he built the house of the Lord. 
and he made a request, he made a prayer to Yahweh on our behalf. And we know that Solomon was Yahweh shot in the flesh. <clears throat> so let's start with that. All right. Um, first Kings eight and 26, because prayer, you got prayer and faith, which really started with Abel. All right. You got Adam. Then you had Cain and Abel. And when, when Abel offered up his sacrifices, he did it in what? He did it in faith. All right. So that's what this lesson is about. Prayer and faith. So let's get the example of prayer with King Solomon. First Kings 8 and 26. And now, O, o God, O power of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will Yahweh indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, right? How much less this house that I have built it. You got all these churches being erected all around the world. And the Lord don't dwell in those houses, man. Or if anything, the, the spirit, the spirit of Yahweh resteth within uh, men, his men. But it says, uh, will Yahweh dwell on earth? No, he don't dwell in these, these churches made with hands. It says, behold, the heavens, meaning the, the sky, and the heaven of heavens, meaning space, you know, what you would call the sky, then you would call uh, out of space or in the spirit world cannot contain Yahweh. That's why he's a multi-dimensional. Fourth dimension, fifth dimension, who knows? But the fourth dimension is the spirit realm. And that, can, that cannot even contain Yahweh. The space cannot contain Yahweh. The earth can definitely not contain Yahweh. Because it's just a gravel, a grain of sand. All right, so how much less this house that I have builded? Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. All right, so our prayers and supplication, to get that word supplication. Because when you pray, you're supposed to, um, you can, it's, let's look at the word prayer too. Supplication. The word supplication means the act of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. All right, so that's the same word as prayer. Prayer, etymology. It says um, the word prayer, it means to earnestly entreat. To ask, to ask earnestly. All right, so asking for blessings, you know. So that's that's what King Solomon was doing. He was praying and he was asking, and that's what we do, because he Yahweh is our power. So we're supposed to pray to the Father and ask for everything. So when I pray, just for example, anybody want to use this, when I pray, which I'm sure um, all of us feel we should pray more. I know I do. Um, but when I do pray, I, I do um, request, or I do a report of the things I see here on the earth and the prophecy playing out and the things around me. And I do a request, which would be the supplication, things to ask for, wisdom, strength, you know, all the things pertaining to Yahweh's will, not things pertaining to you. If it's pertaining to you, it better pertain to Yahweh's will. Like if you want a car, you better need a car to get around and do the Lord's work. But you can also use it to pay your bills and, you know, travel. 
need a house, but you should have a house so you can have it be your, um, uh, what's the word, man? Your place to set up so you can um, teach, all right? Or you, or you use that as your base point to be able to uh, um, be in a certain city to teach in that city. So when you're praying, ask for things according to the Father's will. And then also there's praise, all right? So it's report, request, and then pray, uh, praise, saying thank you. Because you know these things are, are going to be taken care of. All right? So, 1 Kings 8 and 28. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Yahweh, my power, to hearken unto thy cry and to... Oh, uh, hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. That thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day even toward the place of which thou hast said my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer of thy servant and shall make prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place and hearken to hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they not the whole world but when Israelites shall pray towards this place see this is why we pray towards Jerusalem because of the, the agreement that King Solomon made with Yahweh and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest, forgive. If any man <clears throat> trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear and the oath come before thine altar in thine house, in this house, then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head. Let me skip to the point. It's going to get confusing. Here you go. Verse 33. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, and we were smitten down in 70 AD before Esau, especially here in America, because they have sinned against thee. And see, that's, what, that's the only reason we were smitten down, because we sinned against the Father, Yahweh. And turn again to thee. See, if we repent and we, and we turn again to Yahweh, and the only one that's going to turn to Yahweh is the um, elect in these times. All right. Well, the, the hopeful elect will be delivered. He said, many shall be called, but only few are going to be chosen. So many are going to turn and claim to repent, but only few are going to be sincere. And shall turn again to thee and confess thy name. See, we got we got to confess his name, too can't be saying Yah or Yod here, all these weird names. His name is Yahweh. So you got to turn, repent, turn back from our ways. And that, that, that path of falling away, we got to turn away from that. And confess his name and pray and mean begin to talk to him and, and ask the Lord for forgiveness and make supplication unto thee, meaning to cry out or ask earnestly for us to be saved or delivered, bless us to be the elect, you know. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel. So whose sin is going to be forgiven? The scriptures say es Esau uh, sought repentance and found no place for it. Though he he sought it carefully with tears, he tried to try to pray and supplicate. <laughs> try to do it carefully with with tears, and the Lord like, nah. I, I reject that deposit. Then hear thou in heaven, so the Lord can hear us, man. And for and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and by sending Yahweh Shai, Yahweh is, is uh, forgiving. 
the sins of Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. So now, now we're, we're in the lands where we were scattered and we're praying to the Father. We're turning back to him. And now the next step is for him to bring us again to that land. All right. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. The famines that comes because our people sinned against the Lord. And, and that's about to happen here again. So what are we going to be doing? Praying to the Father. Praying to the Lord. If they pray towards this place, if we pray towards Jerusalem, in America we'd be praying to the east and, and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest, afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive thy, the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain unto, upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. Jesus, we're down to the bottom. All right. So, you know, you can keep reading. I'm not going to read this whole thing, man. It's going forever. But 1 Kings chapter 8 tells you if we pray towards Jerusalem, it says, Then hear thou in heaven, which is thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to the. Let me read that one real quick. Let's start from 41. Moreover, concerning a stranger, all right, and that word stranger is talking about an Israelite stranger, all right, and which we were, according to Revelation chapter 11. We were spiritually dead, and we woke up to the truth. We were now we're no longer strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. Moreover, concerning a stranger, an Israelite, that is not of thy people Israel, meaning not living in the land of Israel, which we're not living in that land, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. And we're coming out of these far countries. For they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray towards this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do see according to all that the stranger the Israelite stranger calleth to thee for and we're calling for the Lord to the Lord for what deliverance for wisdom for mercy all right all the things pertaining to his will now let me get that word uh first Corinthians 8 In uh, 41. All right, so let me get this real quick. The word stranger there is. This is Nakayar. All right. Nakaria, which means a foreigner or an alien, a foreign, basically somebody that's not born in that land, all right? So, um, where was I at? So let's get to the point. Verse 43. It says, Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for. For all people that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people Israel it's kind of like saying Jews and Gentiles right there Israelite that know the Israelites are the circumcision and then the, the Israelite Gentiles and that they may know that this house which I have built it is called by thy name okay so we can go on and on so the whole focus is that um it says, what, if thy people go out to battle against their enemy, see, we're in the time of battle against our enemy, 
whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto Yahweh toward the city which thou hast chosen, chose Jerusalem, and toward the house that I have built for thy name. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, man. So, all right, so the point should be made that this is why we pray towards the east. All right, and it was a custom of our people. It was, it's not something that's just made up in America. Even uh, Daniel, let's get that. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 6 and 10. Now, a lot of people don't know that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den twice, all right? And um, it's been proven. I've, I've done a couple lessons on it. But he was thrown in the lion's den twice. One time he was in there for seven days, and another time he was in there just for one day. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 6 and 10, and this is speaking of around 539, 540, okay, uh, B.C. Um, now it says, uh, this is Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, right, they put out a decree. This was when um, you had Cyrus and who was known as Gobarius, who they called Dar Darius, who was the son of um, Astyages of the Medes. That's what brought the Persians and the Medes together. Um, this was not the, the, the Persian uh, Darius. This was the Mede Darius, Darius, all right, who was made king over Babylon under, under Cyrus. So they put out a decree that anybody that's caught praying or not bowing down to that statue or, or praying at least um, that they pray to any uh, you know from their view they were saying if anybody doesn't pray to their idols and they pray to any other god when there's only one true and living God, Yahweh, then um, they would be put to, put to the lions. Then the lions being put into the lions then in Babylon was kind of equivalent to like a test, or they would drop somebody from a, a damn building, a shaft, and they would drop them into a fire right in front of the oven and they would throw them into that damn oven so that was like equivalent to the Roman Empire using the cross to hang people alright so but but the Babylonians like Nebuchadnezzar when they would kill somebody they would sacrifice them to their idols so Daniel chapter 6 and 10 now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his and and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, right? They had windows back then, and it was open in his chamber, but it was towards Jerusalem. See, we ain't supposed to be looking out our damn window, wishing on a damn star like they taught us in Disney. When you wish upon a star and shit, <laughs> but he said what? His windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. Why? Because he was following after the custom that was set in place by King Solomon. All right. So, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. So he prayed three times a day. All right, and prayed and gave thanks before his power as he did aforetime. So he's already doing that. He was praying three times a day. Um, then, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. So, hey, hey man, that's, a, um, that's power right there. 
An a army that don't does not have to fight upon their feet, but can fight upon their knees praying. The strongest army in the world. All right, that can win the battle through prayer. That's why scripture said um, the people are stronger than the other people. I Meaning Jacob is stronger than Esau. Esau's blessing. All right, so Daniel was praying towards the east. All right, so it's not something we made up. It's something that's a custom of our people to pray towards the east. Even uh, Hezekiah, before he died, he had enough faith. So it took faith. The word faith just goes back to the word belief. He believed. So let's read about Hezekiah real quick. All right, and I'm sure it doesn't say it, but I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I can I can imagine that Hezekiah, when he prayed, he prayed towards the east when he turned. And then he tried to create some, some form of privacy. You got to have some, some type of privacy when you pray. You go in secret. You, you can pray openly, it is what it is, but, you know, you have to pray. But you know, it's better to go in, in secret, in private, and pray. And the Lord will reward you openly. And don't tell everybody about your prayer. <sighs> don't tell everybody about your blessings and your prayers too much. All right, so this is 2 Kings 20 and 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. King Hezekiah, he was a righteous king. All right. Um... And then you have the, um, yeah, Hezekiah, yeah, king of Judah. He was, he was a, right, a righteous king. And it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, um, right, I think Isaiah prophesied to about 681 B.C., that's around the time uh, Hezekiah died. All right. Um, and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. So he turned. What direction that was, you know. But he turned for a reason. He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto Yahweh. See that? He didn't go out in front of the whole congregation like these church folks do. Or like they did with Obama. They were praying. <laughs> or, you know, it says, I beseech thee, O Yahweh, remember now how I have walked before thee in the truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept very sore. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out in the middle of the court that the word of Yahweh came to him saying turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people thus save Yahweh the power and the God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer I have seen thy tears behold I will heal thee on the third day third thou shalt go up unto the house of Yahweh and I will add unto thy days 15 years. So the Lord added 15 years on to Hezekiah's life. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. I'll show you the power of prayer, man. The Lord can hear us. And he even added days unto the life of Hezekiah. Fifteen, actually, ain't even days. He had a years, fifteen years to his life. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. So I was looking at the calculation. This happened. Um, this prayer from Hezekiah. 
when the Lord added on 15 years, it had to happen around like 702 BC, right, be right before 701, when the Lord delivered us um, uh, from uh, Sennacherib. All right, when, it, when the attacks of Sennacherib showed up in 701 BC, so 702 was when this prayer happened and the Lord added on 15 years to Hezekiah's life, which he died in 687 uh, BC. All right, so that's the power of prayer, man. Added on 15 days. All right, so that goes into the prayer of Hezekiah, the prayer of da Daniel, the prayer of Solomon, and all towards Jerusalem. That's the direction that we should pray. First Timothy 2 and 8. This is the point. I will. This is his will. This is the Father's will. Therefore, that men pray everywhere. So anywhere we are, we, we can pray. You can pray in the shower. You can pray in the bathroom. You can pray at work. You can pray um, when you're in the car, wherever you're at. You don't have to be in some church or in some mosque or something crazy. And this is how you do it. You don't you don't prostrate and bang your head on the ground like Muslims. It says this, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So you gotta have faith. You got you can't be doubtful. And don't show up to the Lord in wrath, like praying against your brother for something to happen, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you don't want to pray for that. You want to pray to the Lord to have mercy on you. You ask the Lord to destroy the enemy and destroy the wicked. Without wrath and without doubting. So you got to have faith in your prayer. Belief. Like Hezekiah did. Like Solomon did. All right. So lifting up. What holy hands, not not one hand, not putting your hands together, but we said lifting up holy hands, man, lifting them up. All right. So and we pray everywhere. In the ancient times, I used to, our people used to go up under the myrtle trees and pray. So that was like our closet when we were outside. We would gather under the myrtle trees and um, it was so huge, it would cast a shadow and our people would use that at certain times to pray to the Father. All right. That's right, man, because you see, Daniel was even praying to the Father. It means talking to him, requesting, and you know, thanking the Father. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 Pray without ceasing, man. All right? Pray without ceasing. So don't ever stop uh, praying. And this is important. And don't wait till you get in trouble or in some type of danger to pray. Uh, he said this right here. Let me get this. All right? So the Lord told us, he said what? Uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 17 Ye shall have no respect of persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgments, the judgment is Yahweh's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. All right, so if something's too hard for us or something we can't figure out, we bring it to your house. You got issues in your house with your woman, with your children, with yourself. You pray to the Father and ask for understanding or for Him to fix it and change things. You know, to according to His will. All right. <clears throat> so let's get back. So anything that's too hard for us, we bring it to the Father in prayer. But he said, ye are judges. Can you not judge these small? You're going to judge angels. 
Can you not judge these small matters? Yeah, we can judge small, we can judge things. But if it's too hard for you to figure out, don't move in haste, don't move in doubt, don't give up. You know, don't um, act off your own thinking. You take it to the Lord and, and he will hear you. Right, but then the carnal mind would think this way, but we understand that the Most High is all powerful. You know, um, this is uh, Psalms eight and four. What is man? It's like, who are we for the Lord to even hear us, man? But what happens when there's a cluster of sand in your hand, and the Lord picks one grain up? That grain has just gained value. That ga that grain has gained some importance. Because of the choice of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, the election. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Like who are we that the Lord even can hear our prayers? All right. So with that in mind, First Thessalonians five and seventeen, it says, "Pray without ceasing." And in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of Yahweh in Yahweh Shai concerning you. See that? So this is the Father's will that we pray to him. And in everything, give thanks with, with the prayers and supplication. I also give thanks. That's why I said um, my standard of prayer is to give report of the things we see the things happening that he already knows is happening but just I see your prophecies happening Russia is doing this you know this wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth um request and also what giving thanks alright giving praise to the most high All right, so pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks to your help. All right, so Matthew 6 and 5. And when thou prayest, okay, when you're praying and talking to the Father, um, asking, uh, begging for mercy and guidance, all right, so, um, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. Like, you know, Christians, man, they love to do that, and the Catholics. They like to pray out in the streets and, and pray, uh, we, you know, we might do our opener where we pray to the Father, and at the end, we are closing but you know they be out there um like the lord said about to eat their they swine and pork barbecuing and trying to uh, bless themselves in the gardens or well, before a show they all gather in a circle and they pray to the wrong name or they get a reward an award and they pray to themselves or to a false name <laughs> Like I just watched the, it was on the radio. What was it called the Emmys? It was a couple of days ago. I don't watch that mess, but um, some actor was up there, Jake, and she said, "You know who I want to thank? I want to thank me." <laughs> that shows you, man, their belief in Yahweh. You know, the Most High is down. They don't believe at all. They're losing what? Faith. They're losing uh, belief. All right. So they, they love to pray um, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. That's their whole goal. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. All right. 
So if you're fasting or you're praying and somebody walk up and say, hey, this is a good prayer. <laughs> or if you're fasting and say, hey, man, good job fasting. That's your reward right there. We want our reward from the Father. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, man. So find some privacy, basically. All right. And when thou has shut thy door, once you set everything up, you shut the door. And you, you, you finally got some privacy and it's quiet or not. When thou has shut thy door, once you made that complete setup for privacy, man, it's just you and the Lord. Then pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. All right. He shall reward you openly in front of the world. You pray for wisdom. You pray for mercy. The Lord have mercy on you in front of the whole world. He have give you wisdom in front of the whole world. You see that? But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. That repeating it over and over again. He coming in a Hyundai. He coming in a Hyundai. Yeah, but ever do. I remember um, my wicked uh, sister back in the day. She used to go to this church, Bethel Baptist, man. We went out there and rebuked them too, that church. Uh, anyway, so that church, um, she was a minister, which women are not supposed to be pastors, man, preachers. But she was a minister at that church. And I was young. Um, this one, the judge kicked me out of Philly, and I was down here in Jacksonville. So I was, had to follow her around everywhere she went. And uh, she told me, um, she said, hey, I got to go to my tongue classes. <laughs> I was like, what? Your tongue class? Then when she started, like, started parting ways with me, man, because it was just tripping me out, the stuff she was into at that church. And they used to be in the class practicing that homie ghost. I don't call it the holy ghost. The homie, the homie ghost. They start falling and wailing all over the floor. and They got demons on them. They say, coming in a Hyundai. <laughs> but they had to keep practicing that stuff over and over again. But the Lord said, if you're going to speak in tongues, you better have an interpreter. And tongues just mean languages. It doesn't mean like your own private language. Like, like polite made up his own damn language. Not like that. It's talking about speaking in a different language. It's better to have an interpreter. If you're speaking in Hebrew, praying to the Father... Uh, for the people, you should have an interpreter. All right? If you're speaking in whatever language, you should be able to interpret it. But praying praying can be done in any, any language. It's, but when it comes to the Father's name, you have to say Yahweh and his son named Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bar Hashem. So if you, let's get that. All right, that's what Yahweh Shai said. 14 John 14 and 12 it says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I shall do he shall do also so those that have faith in Yahweh Shai the works that he's done we're going to do that also we're doing that now teaching and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father so even greater works than that teaching through the internet and ultimately having uh, spiritual powers Yahweh was only here to show a certain amount of miracles and he he did so many miracles they cannot be written in the book so we're going to be teaching on a, on a wider scale because of Yahweh Shai Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Father and he's able to send his spirit here to us and that spirit is able to be shared with others in the uh, amongst Israel alright through the internet and in person so this is a greater work you know meaning like on a um, 
on a wider scale. And whatsoever, this is the point, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. So we got to ask the Father in the name of Yahweh Shai. That's why it's important. We say Yahweh Ba Hashem. In Ba means in. Ha is the. Shem is a uh, name. So we ask anything in the name of Yahweh Shai. That will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Right? So if you ask the Father for, you ask Yahweh Shai for a Bentley, that's not according to the Father's will. You know? So you should, you're supposed to be asking for things dealing with righteousness and his kingdom. And to develop you, us, into the characters we need to be in his sight. All right? I'm gonna read this. I might cut it short, man. I'm trying to make my lesson shorter. Matthew six and uh, uh, seven. But when, but when ye pray, use not vain repetition. It's vain to do all that repetition. Hamana, hamana, hamana. As, as vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they, uh, yeah, especially them, them Khazars over there. They can't come over there. Come over there. Banging their head on the fucking wall. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> These people are crazy, man. That man, the Muslims, man, banging their head on the ground. Then you got them Elamites. When they say uh, to afflict your soul, they take knives and tie them to strings and they whip their back with it and make themselves bleed. These people are crazy, man. So it's for they think, it says, don't use vain, vain repetitions. The Lord ain't hearing that gibberish as the heathens do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking what, is, what happens when you go into Christian churches come on get louder cry out you gotta keep going they do it for a long time or they um, the Khazar, they do it for prayers for a long time or um, the Muslims I used to watch them arguing up in Philly they be like, man, look at my prostration mark. Yours ain't thicker than mine. You don't pray longer than me. Not lying, man. That's the type of arguments they have. But they think that they shall be heard through their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of. He don't need you to talk his damn ear off. You just say it, keep it short, sweet. Before ye ask him, before ye even ask him, man. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which is the, the Hebrew, you say this in the Hebrew, Abinawa, Shabbat, Shemayam, Kodash, Hayah, Shemkai, Yahweh, Malakwat, Ka, Taba'a, Ratazaka, Hayah, Aisha, Ba'arat, you know. Um, so you can keep going, you know, you can pull that up if you look up um, the Lord's Prayer in Paleo Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash, all right? So that's the Lord's Prayer. It says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, meaning your name is holy, Yahweh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. See, you can hear the, you can hear the report, the prayer, the request, and the, the praise in it. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So that's another thing, forgiving your brothers. Before you go to the Lord and pray. You know, you got to forgive um, your brothers if they trespass against you. You don't have to go through the bullshit again, but you, you know, you forgive your brother. Um, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses, man. All right, because you got a lot of hypocrites out here that be all over the internet boasting and doing it. I just imagine how they are when they pray to the father, man. <laughs> the same one, yes, Lord, yes, my Lord. And then they get on the screen, yeah, you know what I mean? That's why I carry my gun with me. That's why I do this, I do that. 
you niggas out there, you know, they're too Rambo in this truth, man. But the Lord know they real spirit. They can act all they want for us. Because that's what this is about. Humbleness. Meekness. Being a soldier, but don't be a tyrant. All right, so this is Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, so the Lord's people are the Israelites, which are called by my name, meaning he the one that called them his people, shall humble themselves and pray. All right? If, we, if our people will humble themselves and pray to the Father, man. They want success. They want freedom. Well, we have to humble ourselves and pray to the Father in truth. He seeketh us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So if they, if our people will humble themselves, which they won't, only the elect will, and pray and seek my face. So to seek his face means to seek Yahweh, to seek the truth. And turn from their wicked ways, it means to repent. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land, man. So the Lord is going to do that. He already set it up for us to be uh, heard in these appointed times and for us to be forgiven. And he's going to heal our land, man. And with healing comes growth and increase. Milk and honey. That's right, man. Because he said, so... Two thirds aren't going to do it, but the elect will. The Lord said He's reserved, he's reserved for Him seven thousand men that have not bowed the knee to Baal, but instead we have bowed the knee and humbled ourselves to the names of Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Shai. First Peter two and five. Ye also, as lively stones, men are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what our prayers are. Spiritual sacrifices. That's what our teaching and praising the Lord is. A spiritual sacrifice. Acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, man. Alright, so that's the only way the Lord is accepting anything from us. Is if we go through his son, Yahweh Shai. So it's Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So when you pray, you pray to the Father. In the name of his son and through his son, Yahweh Shah. All right. So, um, so it's acceptable. Okay. That's what the Lord is accepting from us. You say, how do I, how do I have faith? How do I pray? How do I pray and have faith? Well, do the things that are acceptable to the Lord. That's it. That's, that's it. And going out and teaching, that's acceptable to the Lord. Praying to the Father in secret, that's acceptable. All right. Vain repetition, the Lord ain't dealing with that. Going out in the open, praying in front of everybody, and watch, watch this, y'all. I'm going to knock the whole crowd down when I wave my hand. You know, I'm going to pray over this people, this whole nation, you know, over this, this whole nation, like, like Martin Luther King used to do. All right, so that's what it's about, man. Our people humbling ourselves and praying to the Father. All right, Sirach 35 and 16, in an acceptable way to pray through in the name of his son, Yahweh. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, man, with blessing. And his prayer shall reach unto the clouds, man. So if you're in this truth, and you're serving the Lord by doing the work, by keeping the laws to the best of your ability. And that's it. You know, but some people, they're looking for gold to fall out the sky or some type of miracle to happen. No, the Lord said you got to maintain that, that faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You got to maintain that. That's why it's faith. If he if he had the kingdom right in front of us, we wouldn't have to have faith to see it. We had to have faith to get there, but not to know that it, it exists. 
So the Lord has hidden everything from us except for wisdom and understanding and knowledge, but hidden it from our sight that we have to have faith. And that's a beautiful situation to be in, having faith in the Father, man, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because he's faithful and true. So Rock 35 and 16, he that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, man. See, acceptable. And his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. The prayer of the humble <clears throat> pierces the clouds, right? Not the prayer of the rich, but people that, that boasting and proud, prideful and shit. Just because you high ranking, the Lord ain't looking here in your prayer. He ain't worrying about all that. But the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart. That's right, man. So you're going to sit there and wait for your blessing. <laughs> Till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. Meaning you ain't going to move in haste like, like Saul did, you know, before David. Saul prayed, but he didn't get the answers he wanted. So he went out and um, uh, sought after uh, witches and soothsayers. All right, and fought against the Philistines itself, and he lost. He moved in haste instead of waiting on the Lord. All right, so this is James 5 and uh, 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. It's talking about Esau, and the laborers are Israelites which is of you kept back by fraud, man. So they keep the truth from us. They keep um, this world and the wealth of it from us through fraud. Uh, we It says what? Crieth. So we're crying out. And the cries of them, which also goes into prayers, and us teaching out in the street, praising the Lord, crying out. And crying out to our people. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord. Of the Lord of armies. The heavenly armies. Whoo. Wow, man. So, that's right. So, um, so the Lord has heard our cries. And that's bad for Esau. Why? Why? It said, because ye have lived in pleasures on the earth and been wanton, ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. They still on that robbing, stealing, and killing shit towards Israel. The day of slaughter is supposed to be over, but they still want to slaughter us. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doeth not resist you. They've killed us a thousand times over, and they want to continue it, depopulation. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and he have long patience for it, man. So Yahweh Shai is waiting for the righteous fruit to harvest and also the wicked to be in, in harvest as well, according to Revelation 16. All right? And have long patience for it, until he received the early and the latter rain, man. Okay, so the ones that came to the truth early, like Abba Bibbins and um, returning the hearts of the children to the fathers, basically. Woke up the fathers and then woke up the children. All right, so the early and the latter rain. <clears throat> it says, be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So we have to be patient, just like Yahushai is being patient for the elect to be woken up. All right, 2 Corinthians 6 um, and 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of Yahweh in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, man. So we don't we shouldn't take this moment in vain to pray to the Lord. 
because this is the time when the Lord is, has his ear open to us. On judgment day, he's not going to be listening to anybody. His judgment, you know, his judgment is going to be given up. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is Isaiah 62 and 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Yet ye that make mention of the Lord keep not silence. Give him and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So saying, get on the Lord's nerves, man. Pray to him. Call on him. He, he, the Lord not saying be quiet. He's saying, keep come on. Let me hear your voice. Alright, don't give him any rest until he has made us a praise in the earth. Because that's what he promised to do. Okay. This is Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near, man. Alright, so this is this is the time to call on him. This is the time to seek the Lord. And that's just it. Alright. So let me end it with this one, man. This is Tobit chapter 12, verse 15. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One of Israel. Right? Because the, the angels, they're, they're, they're Yahweh's servants and they're, they're in the heavens on our behalf as well. They act on our behalf. Like, um... Uh, uh, let me get that. This is Matthew 18 and 10. If I can get it. Because Raphael, Rapaya Allah, which means the healer of the most high power. He's one of the seven holy angels which present the, our prayers, which is like an element. Our prayers is like a... It's, the scriptures say who... Can you can you um see the actual breath of a person? The Lord can. He can see your actual voice. Show me the image of a voice. They can do it through computers, but the Lord can do it just you can see your voice. So he's one of the, so Raphael is one of the holy angels that present the prayers of the saints. And what's who are the saints? Those that made sacrifice to the Lord, which are the Israelites. And also of the Israelites, there are the elect. All right, so these angels go in and out before the Lord, and what do they do? They serve Yahweh, and also they uh, they pray on our behalf. Matthew 18 and 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. The little ones are the elect. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven all right so and they're right there on our behalf let's get this real quick all right <clears throat> revelation 13 and 10 and this is this is one of the prayers of the saints of the israelites revelation 13 and 10 he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity so the ones that have led us over here into captivity, Esau and these nations, they're, they're going to go into captivity. This is our prayer, our request to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And Esau's blessing was the sword, and to kill with the sword. So they're going to be destroyed by the same. Here is the patience. This is our patience. This is what we're waiting for. And the faith of the saints this is what we have faith in the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen yet so this is our faith of the saints all right and the saints are those that are making prayers to the father and their prayers are heard by the angels by the clouds they pierce the clouds and they make it all the way to the heavens 
and the angels present our prayers before the Father. And this is what we get right here. This is uh, Revelations 5 and 7. Um, Start from 5 and 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of Yahweh and of the four beasts, the four living angels, and in the midst of the elders, the elect, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. It goes to the, the elect over the seven churches of Asia Minor. Which are the seven spirits of Yahweh sent forth into all the earth. He, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, the four angels, and the four and twenty elders, twenty-four elders, goes into the elect, all right, twelve disciples, twelve prophets, I mean, uh, 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 twelve patriarchs, all right, um, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, man. So those vials full of odors, you got to fill them up with our prayers, man. All right. So um, when, when those prayers get answered, here you go, right here. Um, let me see, where is it at? All right, this is the prayers again, Revelations 8 and 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, see, odors, incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers, which came with the prayers of the saints, as I was saying, ascended up before Yahweh out of the angel's hands and the and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and this, this is going to be the response and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake world war three man so our prayers are going to be answered all right and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound man because our prayer should be full of prophecy, asking the Lord to bring bring to pass His will, which is to destroy Esau, to bring in World War Three, to deliver us, um, to to continue to wake up the elect and take us home to our homeland and build up our homeland. <clears throat> All right, and to bring His judgment. So with that, uh, th this is the power of prayer and. Uh, what prayer is and how we should pray. How we should pray towards the east, hands stretched out. And uh, what you should pray for is the Father's will to be your will in Yahweh Shai, in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right, you got to pray to the Father in his true name, in the Son's name. All right, so with that, I'm going to end it and say uh, Shalom. Hope you're edifying.